But here's what he did. Ram it. Do you know how to ram it? Oh, please just ram it. And he really gets into it. Do you know how to ram it? Yes, of course. Sir. We I will mean, you don't even have to think about it. Like, so let's ram it today. Ram it. Yes. We are going to ram it. Just yeah, ram that's it. That's where he just after ram it. I like Everybody it. ram it. I'm not going to remember any of it. That's good. <laughs> that's the way to go. I'll go to the rams today and ram it. I mean, now he's like on his feet. How are you guys? Who's house? Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Rams Brothers the Pod. I'm your host, Dean, and I'm joined by the other host of this show, Nick. And Nick, we are back. We're so back. It's time to get ready for the Bills. It's time to put it all back together. It's time to defend the championship. How are you? Oh, Dean, I'm just absolutely phenomenal. I'm going to break out the syllable counter. Call me Josh Peck. Um, I'll repeat stuff for emphasis. Emphasis. Emphasis, yeah. There you go. I was waiting for that. Okay, yeah, now no. I'm showing I wanted, rage. I wanted you to say it. I'll tell you what. There is a lot of emphasis around this game. There are a lot of fun parallels. There are a lot of fun built-in storylines that we're going to dig into. We're going to go through matchups. We're going to go through changes year over year. Um, some injury stuff, have Nick's picks on the docket. So we are ready to go. I, I couldn't be more excited for this season to start. A couple of days ago, I was sitting to myself and thinking, hmm, you know, maybe I could wait a few more days. I could probably wait until Sunday. But we're back. Like there's the social media video that came out today. I was going to bring that up. Being the new mantra. You can go into it in a sec. Um, but like there's a lot to be excited about. But before we go into anything, Right off the top, our betting sponsor, BUSR, it is 100% first deposit bonus, up to $1,000. Plus, you get 25 casino chips that you can throw away immediately in blackjack like me. Any amount at, um, any amount that you deposit to new users um, upon sign-up will be equal to $1,000 max. So all you have to do is go to BUSR.ag. That's BUSR.ag. Put in $1,000. They'll match it. You put 2000 on the Rams. Do whatever the hell you want. Fun is to be had at BUSR. Absolutely. Um, Dean, just to get started on the video that they dropped today, um, I saw it on uh, uh, Instagram while I was at the gym, actually, which was a great time to see it because sure. I just I felt the chills. I mean, if you're, if you're watching that video and you're not just completely ready to run through a brick wall, <laughs> then I don't, I, I don't know I, I don't know what to say to you. I guess you're not a Rams fan. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, run it forward. I liked that. I actually liked what Ramsey said today when he was just like, be legendary. I think that yeah. should be the yeah. mantra. That is, that's one of the coolest quotes. I mean, it's so simple. Like that, that, that would take a whole marketing team of nerds to figure that out. He just said it at the drop of a hat. So smart. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, that's the mindset that they have instilled in each other, right? When you have greatness on the field, you have greatness in the locker room. You want to be able to be legendary and build upon what you built the year prior. And that's what they're going for. It's a back-to-back -back Super Bowl. It's getting back to the big stage. They're going to write another letter to the Lombardi Trophy, hopefully, and run it forward, right? I think the new mantra is, I like it better than run it back, run it forward. You have a new mentality. But there was a line that J.B. Long used, Nick, that sparked the chills, and that line is, defending champs cling to past glory while reigning champs dictate the future. And I was like, oh, fully yeah, engulfed cool. in chills. Like that was that. the last the one that got me. It wasn't the highlights. I've seen them all a million times to this point. I could watch them a million more times. But it was that line specifically where I was like, okay, I'm ready to go. Let's do it. And that was probably the point of the video. Yeah, I mean, you know, just as a as a wannabe writer uh, myself, that's the kind of stuff where it's like I the, I want to meet the guy who wrote that line because I felt the exact. It's funny that you pointed that out. I actually wrote that down in my notes app because I was like, that's such a good like little tidbit. Um, yeah, <laughs> excuse me. Bless you. Thank Bless you. You. Um, you could use that line when we're rewriting the new Little Giants script, right? Potentially. Right, yeah. Your Rams and San Francisco 49ers, the Little Giants in Los Angeles, could be a. a we we need to way. change the name if if it wasn't going to be about yeah, Giants. Yeah, obviously, it could be the Little Rams or whatever the hell mm -hmm. you want it to be. But working working title, okay. Tight, patent pending. 
Patent pending. pending. So I wanted to go with Nick changes year over year because it felt like as the offseason was progressing that the Rams had a lot of focus on who they've lost, right? Obviously, right. big name free agents. And before the- before we go right in this, I just want to I, I want your guttural reaction. What was the biggest loss from this offseason? Who who singularly what character, as they say in the video? Sure. Was I could go uh, was the was the biggest gut punch? I could go one of two ways. Okay. I, I my think- gut tells me my gut tells me Andrew Whitworth. Although I've said mm. in previous podcasts that I don't think there's going to be a huge drop off between Andrew Whitworth and Joe Nopum. the other side of me is Von Miller, right? Because Von Von Miller was came in was that missing piece that could take you over the top. That's exactly what they believe he's in Buffalo. Although he signed a six year deal for 120 million dollars, so hopefully he could be that guy for six more years. But I, my point is, Andrew Whitworth is the guy that I feel like kept everybody together. Was was consistent, was stable, was great in, in times where they needed him to be great. He stepped up and you saw all the players, how they reacted to him after the, the Super Bowl was won. So while Von Miller was maybe that missing piece, Andrew Whitworth was holistically representing what the Rams organization wants to represent. So I'm going to go with Big Whit. Okay. I think that's a fair answer. Okay. Um, I did dock you a point for not mentioning Robert Woods. Um, fair. Fair. Because I mean, personally, you know, I mean, I'm gonna be rocking my Woods jersey tomorrow or uh, Thursday when I go to the game. Rams fans, by the way, look look for me. Um, <laughs> but I mean, just he was he always was such a heart and soul of that team, and I know he wasn't there on the field during the Super Bowl, of course. But you know, he was uh, such a such a crucial piece of that whole locker room, and yeah, that I mean, to me personally, yeah. that's the biggest one. But on paper, I think the right answer. Would probably be Von Miller. Okay, Von Miller. So you're going against my answer of, of Andrew Whitworth. Fair. I mean, Robert well, Woods. Whitworth, I feel like is like he's still around. You know, he's like sure. he's like a, a like a ghostly mentor. Well, almost. we're gonna know. A we're Professor gonna know. One E. Gad. Of, one of the potential matchups that we're gonna preview is Von Miller and Joe Nopum, right? So that'll be one that we talk about a little bit later in the episode. But like you mentioned, Nick, on paper. Right on paper, everybody's like, oh, the Rams lost so many players. They lost Andrew Whitworth and Andrew Corbett on the offensive line. They lost Von Miller. They lost Darius Williams to free agency to the Jaguars. They lost Sony Michelle. Odell Beckham Jr. is currently injured and is not signed, although we hope to have him back. Sebastian Joseph Day and Troy Reader are with the Chargers. Johnny Munt is in Minnesota with Kevin O'Connell. And Oboe's with the Texans. And Johnny Hecker was cut. And Robert Woods was traded to the Titans. And we don't know if Van Jefferson's going to be featured in this game due to a nagging knee injury. So plenty of drop off year over year for the Rams. But they've gained Allen Robinson, Bobby Wagner, Troy Hill, uh, Riley Dicker, Coleman Shelton, and Joe Nopum are owning larger roles. There's no rookies that are going to be set to start in this game. So we're not going to see any of them. But that's why when people are setting the odds, when people are looking that matchups on paper, it makes sense why they're pulling away from it and saying, uh, you know, I don't know if the Rams are going to be the same team year over year. Yeah. So, so here's what I have to say, right? Um, this Van Jefferson thing, is this, is this official? Is this like, is this like, I didn't know about this. Is he, he didn't practice today, mm-hmm. which makes it seem highly unlikely that he's going to play on Thursday. Oh. If he does practice tomorrow, it would be probably in a limited fashion and they don't expect him. You don't expect the player to go if he can't, fully practice at least a day before the game mentally tomorrow tomorrow be the final determination but he's trending towards being out mentally i'm preparing myself for a scoronic drop if that's the case because hey you know you and thousands of other people on social media i mean my only two memories of him are the super bowl where he like threw the ball into the bengals hands and then the (laughs) nfc championship game or maybe it wasn't the nfc championship game but the game against the Niners, where there's a perfect ball into his over his it was shoulder. early, yeah. Bonk. So the, it's it's more about that. It's it's blocking. It's knowing the offense. I it's, want him to listen to Rams Brothers the Pod and just to be absolutely furious. Liam, no, he's not going to be furious. He's going to be excited with the support that we're providing to him. Mm. Liam Cohn came out and supported him. There's a good write up in the Athletic about Ben Skronik, and you know it might be a little bit of Ben Skronik and Tutu Atwell. 
in that third role, that third receiver role in this game because you don't have Van Jefferson. So you're going to see what both of them are made of, and hopefully they can crush the stereotypes that each of them have on one another. I like but, Tutu. I like the Tutu play. You know, I could, I would love to see him get some reps. Watch, Skronik's going to be like first touchdown scorer at like plus seven. Well, maybe you should take it. You know, you worry about Tutu Atwell in a larger role. When you think about him flying down the field, sure, he could do that. He's a sub-package guy. But can he run the offense in that third receiver spot consistently for however many snaps a game? That's right. going to be the big question. So that all remains to be seen. The Bills on the other side. Von Miller was the marquee signing. But players like defensive tackles Daquan Jones – Tim Settle, Jordan Phillips, and left guard Roger Saffold were all added to bolster the line of scrimmage on both sides. They also added your boy Case Keenum. It's one of the parallels. My boy. Teams. I'm just kidding. It's not your boy. He's probably nobody's boy, but he is the backup quarterback. And then I think Matt Barkley's the third string guy. Uh, David Questenberry on the offensive line, who will probably provide some much needed depth, as we'll get into in the preview. Duke Johnson, Shaq Lawson. Um, and the running back class, I think, right now consists of Devin Singletary, Duke Johnson, and James Cook from Georgia. So that could be a little bit of a problem. But everybody outside of Von Miller, which I thought was really interesting, these guys are on a one- or two-year deal, right? Von Miller signed that massive six-year, $120 million contract. The Bills feel like their window to win is right now. They also have some rookies. Their first-round pick, Kyer Elam from Florida. James Cook in the second round, who we just mentioned. Christian Benford, who's probably going to see some time from Villanova right around the corner from us. So, you know, they, they have some some talent. Like, they made some great, great marquee signings that I feel like they were able to clog some holes, and they also filled some holes internally. Um, they lost Cody Ford to Arizona. He was their starting right guard at one point. Daryl Williams was their starting right tackle. He also played a little bit of right guard when Cody Ford went down. And he started every single game for the Bills over the past two years, was replaced by Spencer Brown, who just had back surgery. Don uh, John Feliciano, maybe a Paisan, starting center, was replaced by Mitch Morse. And they also lost two pass rushers, Mario Addison, Jerry Hughes, replaced by Von Miller, a combination of Boogie Basham and A.J. Espenza. Levi Wallace, keep his name in your mind, who I think they're going to miss the most. Cole Beasley. Who everybody has their own opinion on him. Emmanuel Sanders. Those two guys were replaced by Gabe Davis and Isaiah McKenzie internally. Mitch Trubisky is the backup. Um, or I'm sorry, he, Mitch Trubisky left. He's starting in, in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh now. He was the backup last year. Was the backup last year. Matt Breida, former uh, San Francisco 49er, was replaced by James Cook. Harrison Phillips, AJ Klein, Justin Zimmer. So my point is they made this whole storyline about the Rams and their huge drop-off. On the Bills' offensive line specifically, they have to replace three players. For the Rams, it's Andrew Whitworth and Austin Corbett, and they're going to replace them with Joe Noboom and Coleman Shelton. And then the Bills did the same with Spencer Brown, who's a third-round pick from last year at right tackle. Mitch Morse, who we talked about at center, he'll be fine. He reminds me of John Sullivan. And Ryan Bates at right guard. So plenty of holes to be filled, which we've kind of turned into some matchups we could potentially expose in this game. So... Like I said, the storyline isn't all about the Rams and their drop-off. I think there's a lot going on in Buffalo that they've kind of swept under the rug and have felt like, eh, we're a team that has a window open. We could just do it anyway. Buffalo, one, they feel like a team that is just almighty cursed and maybe forever will be. Um, and then, two, I understand giving Von Miller the bag 100%, you know, sure. especially if you want to win now. Uh, we, you know, we kind of got him on like a great deal, right? We got him on like a, we're winning this season deal. Yep. This six year deal buys them time, but who is Von Miller going to be in six years, man? No, I don't know. I think there's a void year after there's, year three. There's no way he plays for six more years. I no. would, I'd be hard pressed to see him play for three more. No, yeah, and he's not going to see all 120 million of that, but he'll make all of his guaranteed money. And who knows? It's how just many like years everybody loves the Bills, and I get it. Josh Allen like looks like Pat Mahomes, but like kind of bigger, stronger. And, you know, they got Stefan Diggs, who's like a top four receiver. Some would say, um, and you know, they're the Bills. You know, they've been poverty for so long. It's cool that a team like this, like an unproblematic team, is on the up and up. Sure. But 
they they lost against the Chiefs. They had 31 yeah. seconds to get to an NFC championship game, or sorry, AFC championship game, and probably walk through the uh, the Bengals, and they blew it. Their defense blew it. And it's just everybody kind of forgot or, like, doesn't – it's like, oh, but the Chiefs are going to have a sharp decline. The Chiefs got to the AFC championship game. Yeah, right, right. It's, I just don't really understand how – I guess the Bills are just more – they're cooler because they haven't won yet. And the Rams are, like, not this shiny new to- toy anymore because because they did win. And a lot, like, just when I watch coverage, like the preseason stuff, I just don't hear any respect for the Rams. And yet you'd think that the Bills and the Bengals both won a Super Bowl in the last two years. It just doesn't really make sense to me. Um and like the Vegas line is disrespectful for the Rams, and we'll get that we'll get into that in Nick's picks. But yeah, it was last year too. Yeah, you know, I no, mean, but I mean, it's a good point. The Bills are the same team that lost to the Jaguars in the regular season last year, right? And then that's the thing. It's like you're not gonna you, you don't know which Bills team you're gonna get. They they started off week one last year, lost to Big Ben Steelers, and they lost to the Jags, a team co- coached by Urban Meyer, know, loose fingers Meyer. So you got to watch out. I mean, like, I don't know. I just don't. They remind me of kind of like 2018 Rams before they were like the hot shot and they were kind of around, but they've been around for a while now. So I don't know. Listen, there's, um, I think there's a lot of within the game, there's going to be matchups that the Rams can win. I think that this is a tough game considering it's the first game back. You know, you come in as a two and a half point dog, you do have some turnover. So there are some legitimate concerns. Matthew Stafford's elbow that he doesn't want to talk about. But I think within the game, when you look at some of the matchups, some of the injuries, right, it's really Tredavious White and Van Jefferson. Those are the two injuries that we have to focus on. So with Allen Robinson being the guy that seem, we seemingly nobody's talking about, if you're a fantasy expert, you probably took him a little bit higher than you should have. Maybe that's not a bad thing considering the matchup he's going to get in week one. And the 25 points I think he's going to score, he's going up against Dane Jackson, who will be starting in Tredavious White's place. He's just a middle of the pack player. He's a former seventh round pick. Like I'm reading that he's somewhat of even an afterthought after Buffalo had drafted two corners this year and are ended up (laughs) these two guys that they drafted ended up competing for the exact same spot. And Dane Jackson is the guy on the opposite side in replace of Tredavious White. So, I mean, I feel like, that's a matchup that I would pick on. Talk about shiny new toys. I can imagine Stafford is completely ready to expose that matchup. And when you talk about losses, this is probably one of those situations where they still wish that they had Levi Wallace, who I think Nick went to Pittsburgh. So just Allen Robinson versus Uncle Dane Jackson is a matchup in its own that could potentially lead to 14 points in the first half. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, Allen Robinson could be the breakout star of this game. He could be the character that they bring in for the, for the sequel. Um, you know, like uh, what's the uh, Joe Pesci in uh, Lethal Weapon Four? That could be Allen Robinson. <laughs> Get the producer on. Let's clip that. Let's clip that right there, and put a picture of Joe Pesci next to Stafford and Cup. Okay, deal. Do it. They're not going to do it, but they should. They might do it. No, I. Th- that's um, a matchup that everybody's going to have their eyes on. And it's probably a player that didn't expect to be there in this period of time, having to go up against Allen Robinson, but he's there and he has how to many? Play. How many drives until McVay says, I'm going to throw it deep? Oh, I mean, it sh- you should see it in the first possession. Really? Yeah. Yeah, the one these, thing that, that the Rams were not good at last year was so interesting. They started slow almost every game. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be the case this year. I, they yeah. have the, on the other side of the ball, Nick Kyer Elam and Christian Benford, the two rookies, are on the opposite side of, of Uncle Dane Jackson, and they're going to be battling for position. Like if you see Kyer Elam, and he's out there to start, and he's getting exposed. Don't be surprised if you see Christian Benford is rotated in. Like. They're going to need somebody on the field who could make somewhat of a difference. And if it's Ben Skoranek or Tutu Atwell winning battles against them on the outside, they're going to have some problems. Plus, right. And 
yeah. and if you win those battles, it gives you opportunities for Henderson and Cam to just kind of, you know, slide right through. I'm wondering yeah. what's the update on those two? Does it look like both are they're playing? Both play. yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're both healthy and ready to go. Um, yeah. I'm comp they're not on the injury report or anything, so they should be fine. But probably you'll get a dose of both. And you might even get a little Kyron Williams, probably similar to what Buffalo is going to do. Um, but I think the Bills, like if they have a short leash for Kair Elam, the first round pick, like you might see Cooper Cup all over the field. Like you might see Cooper Cup rotate into that outside receiver position opposite of Allen Robinson just to be able to expose these guys in a different way. Like Taron Johnson is going to be traveling with Cooper Cup in the nickel. Like the Bills run nickel defense. And you're going to see Taron Johnson having to travel all over the field to try and cover Cooper Cup, who lines up in the slot on the outside on both sides, potentially in the backfield, lines up on the line of scrimmage. Like the Rams, I think, are going to have their choice when it comes to picking and choosing these matchups just based on the personnel that I'm seeing that Buffalo has on the field. Yeah. I If they're not getting open looks, then you start to get a little worried. But very Stafford, much so. If Stafford has the time, then I think I and I think he will. Um, I don't think the Whitworth will like being out is going to deplete the line as strong as some may think. I think yeah. I think Buffalo may be kind of thinking that, and I you know, but these guys have been ready. I think. Yeah, it depends what they bring at them, right? If they determine that Joe Nopum's a weak link early on, you know, they can get really creative with what they want to throw at the Rams' offensive didn't you, line. Didn't they? Uh, you texted me something about like a hundred percent nickel. Yeah, yeah, that's what the Bills run on defense, 100%. Like 100, I mean, maybe they'll change it, but that's nuts. Yeah, well, I mean, you have to have the extra defensive back out there, right? But I think that it's just – it's kind of standard throughout the league. and 100% though. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that there's a ton of personnel changes just because what they have available, and they like the guys that they have on the field as starters. So if we see that 100% – you're going to see Taron Johnson in the nickel corner role. And that means that he's going to have to cover whoever's in the slot. If it's Cooper Cup, if it's Ben Skronik, if it's Tutu Atwell, you're probably going to see all of those guys rotate in that position eventually. So a big task at hand, hand for not Taron Killam, but Taron Johnson. A big task at hand for Taron. Big task at hand, indeed. The right side uh, of the Bills offensive line also – like we talked about a little bit earlier, there's been a lot of transition there. Spencer Brown is coming off of back surgery. He is a massive human being. He's going to yeah. be standing there at right tackle. I have faith. Scary that guy. He, yeah, he could play a little bit, He, but he's a big dude. And then Ryan Brates at right guard and Mitch Morse at center. So I feel like Leonard Floyd versus Spencer Brown, who can definitely play, is going to be somewhat of a liability. And also, if you line up, Aaron Donald in the three tech and let him split some gaps and double teams and Ryan Bates, who is talented and, and Mitch Morse, they're going to have a hard time handling him on their own. And um, I saw a play. I went back and watched some highlights in the Super Bowl. There was a play where they sacked Joe Burrow. Their defensive line consisted of Leonard Floyd coming off of the right edge. Then it looked like Donald and Von Miller were in the three tech, like lined up on the defensive line. And then Justin Hollins was coming off of the left side. And the play was blown up in like one and a half seconds. So if they could rotate in some players there, I feel like we could attempt to kind of do some similar things if they aren't able to consistently expose a hole in that offensive line. Because remember, they got some talent. Like the left side with Dawkins and Roger Saffold, like they're going to have to get creative on how they're going to rush that left side if the right side holds up a little bit. So Yeah. I mean, we know Saffold is, uh, you know, one of the best in the game, but he does. Saffold, yeah. He's one of, however, six many, six parallels that I listed here. Roger Saffold starting a left guard. Case Keenum being the backup. Um, Von Miller on the opposite side of sideline oh, of Aaron that's Donald. that's what you were doing. Yeah. The Bills and Von Miller actively recruiting Odell Beckham Jr. There's a lot of things. I mean, that are I think that's all, you know, I'm not here to yuck any Bills fans' yums, but I don't think that's actually <laughs> going to happen. I'd be uh, hard pressed. Yeah, may not, but you never know. Yeah, he's you know he's being facetious and tweeting out goofy stuff like "Tee whoever wins gets to take me to the ball." But you know, <laughs> yeah. he's just having fun. No, I yeah. would be too. He's a new dad, you know. He's watching the games. Can't play yet. It's probably he's going to have a blast watching that game. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. Um, some other matchups that I feel like we might struggle with. Keyword might. Weapons. You talked about Stefan Diggs, but he's a weapon in his own. So that that matchup between Stefan Diggs and Jalen Ramsey is going to be interesting. But Gabe Davis, Isaiah McKenzie, and Dawson Knox. Those are the four weapons for the Bills. Ramsey, David Long Jr., Ty Hill, and then Ernest Jones and Bobby Wagner are going to have to handle all four of those guys. So if there's any sort of weakness, you could or, you could, or probably argue that it's Gabriel Davis over David Long Jr. But I don't think that's going to be something that allows – the Rams to be consistently exposed. I, I think Gabriel Davis is a great player, but if they don't feel like David Long is serviceable, they'll rotate in Robert Rochelle or whatever other kind of depth they have at the rookie position and, and try to get that done. But I mean, they, they're going to shade Fuller on whatever side David Long Jr. and Gabriel Davis are on. And then it's going to be Ramsey and Diggs on one other side, just going at each other. Yeah. So, I mean, some say Ramsey kind of struggled at the end a little bit, uh, like, uh, kind of a little bit of a decline going into the Super Bowl and then the Super Bowl. Um, you take away the most obvious offensive face mask pull ever. Um, and Jalen Ramsey's stats in the last three games are still phenomenal. So um, he also had I two doubt tears in his shoulder. The two AC joints were torn. I had to get surgery on one of them. Yeah. I doubt, I doubt we see anything, which is, I mean, I have Stefan Diggs as my wide receiver one in fantasy. So you know, I'll take a Rams win over a fantasy loss. I was uh, going to say, you might get day. 15 points out of them still. Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be crazy high scoring personally, but we'll talk about that. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely trending towards the over for sure. And then injuries that we talked about, mostly healthy game. Thankfully, Tredavious, Tredavious White and Van Jefferson are the two guys that are trending towards being out. Tredavious, Tredavious White's definitely going to be out. Yeah. Um, but mostly healthy otherwise, safety Jordan Poyer and then slot receiver Isaiah McKenzie were both, I think, listed earlier this week, whether it was Sunday or Monday. The weeks are so weird when there's a Thursday night game. But they're both going to be ready to go. And then we have some fun facts before we get into Nick's picks. I mm, thought – Fun facts before the picks. I love that. How about Just this? like fun it's, corner. It's fine. It's a fun corner. It's an open corner. Say whatever open. you like. Okay. Yeah. Um, McVay was asked to throw the ball. If he had the option and the game was trending in that direction, if he had to throw 50 to 55 times to win the game, do you feel like Matthew Stafford is capable of doing so? His answer was a resounding yes with no hesitation. Well, I mean, that's not just, I don't think that's just Stafford's elbow. I think that's what they've seen when they preview the Bills' nickel defense and the corners that are going to be on the field. And also, I know that he, you know, he threw the ball like, 50 to 55 times with Jared Goff. So I <laughs> I know for a fact McVay is going to do what McVay wants to do. And if Stafford goes down, he'll throw the ball with John Wolford. I mean, it's just, yep. it's just you know, it is what it is. That's who he is, and that's why we love him. That is why we love him. Yeah. Um, and he's also 5-0 in opening games. That's not something that's easy to do, especially when your first opening game you're coaching, you're 31 years old. Right. So now 36 I'm going on close 37. to 31. Yeah. How old are you? Are you 29? I am 29. Yeah. 29. Almost 30. Yeah. You got a Super Bowl to win in the next uh, seven years of your life. Yeah, clearly. I got to get on get the on, stand. Get on McVay's page. I, I would have, gladly do I have a, eight years. Would gladly do a scouting internship. Oh, just, that'd be so cool. Just go, just go watch high school football for the I rest of the Just imagine you with like – scrawny kids in college and you just pull up just like you know i'm here for the internship <laughs> i'll take it if it's with the rams i'll take it yeah um especially if it's with the five and zero opening day game sean mcveigh rams i'll take it but not get paid i don't care i'll be a college kid again um yeah i'm paying to go to the game yeah heavy. Well, i'm paid an arm and i like to go to the super bowl that's what we do as fans okay. um Sh sean mcdermott is three and two the the game. Game. All three wins are against the New York Jets. Oh, oh. So any other team he plays in the opener, he loses to, as long as it's not the crappiest team. That's what you've heard. That's mm. correct. I wonder who that, who the other, because I know it's Steelers last year. I wonder who the other one is. Probably Patriots, maybe. It's a good question. I would think it's maybe another AFC East team. Yeah. Pats maybe, or maybe Dolphins. The, maybe, yeah. Maybe the Dolphins. Yeah. 
Yeah, probably everybody loves the probably Dolphins the week one. Mm. I don't. I you know, I'm going to hold off. Well, we're almost here at your picks. Um, yeah. The other thing you mentioned earlier, the Bills are unanimous Super Bowl favorites. You might talk about this in your picks, but unanimous plus six hundred, and the next closest team is like plus seven fifty or plus eight hundred. And Josh Allen is unanimous Super Bowl or unanimous MVP of the season. When was the last time the unanimous number one team won the Super Bowl? Maybe Patriots, but yeah. even then, like, I mean, come on. Last year, who was it? Bucks? Or no, it was probably Kansas City, right? It was the Bucks, and then it was Kansas City. Yeah. Sorry, neither of them even made it to the game. And then it was Green Bay, I believe. And we were right. Green Bay's there. always up there. I mean, you maybe be... they'll, they'll squeak another one, but yeah. You want to be sitting know, pretty man. in like the fourth or the fifth spot. Yeah. That's where you want to be. I think the Chargers have better odds than us right now, too, which is crazy. And their Rams are currently two and a half point dogs, as we mentioned. Right. I mean, I'll, I'll get into that. But before we get into that, um, don't forget, guys, we have an exclusive offer of a very cool Marshall Falk signed picture. You have to text Rams Bros, R A M B R O S, to 31032. They, it, it, you're a member of all Rams Brothers uh, updates and everything, and it's a good way to keep you in the loop when we drop a podcast or you know we're going to a game, we're hosting a hosting a bar hop thing, you know whatever comes down the line this season. That's how you find out about it. Uh, so yeah, you should. Only, you should yeah, just once you're good. in the text line, you're in. You're, yeah. you, you've entered. Oh, right. Yeah. The text line gets you the picture. I forgot you about just that have part. to be following Rams Brothers on social media and you're in business. <laughs> that is correct. That's how it works. Are we ready for Nick's picks? Well, Dean, um, yeah. Oh, hold on one second. Uh, Dean, I talked it over with, with uh, the studio head at Disney, uh, pulled some strings, and I was able to scrap some money in the budget to afford a theme song for Nick's picks. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is kind of a big deal. Uh, Dean has it? not heard this theme song. Uh, would you mind playing it for us to get us all in the mood for gambling? I sure would. You're all right. Ready let's for it? hear it. Yep. I'm ready. <laughs> Nicky's picks. Right here on Thursday, Nikki's picks, where we all come to play. There's Dean, the hunky advisor. Dean's locks are not a part of Nick's picks. Then there's Dean's younger brother. He's the smart one. Meet their old dad, too. He comes on occasionally. Of course, it's time for Nikki's picks. They're the very best. He's the rootinest, tootinest gambler in the NFC West. <laughs> oh my god why is it so well written oh my god it's perfectly well written how did you get budget for that i don't know man i i pulled some strings at work and uh i talked to the studio head and uh i was like look it's a parody all right we should be cleared we should be okay and uh you know we'll find out i i talked to weird al i think we're in the okay but we are back nick's pigs are back we are so back, and it's oh, good man. to be back. Can I just Gosh, say, Dean. the, the rootinest, tootinest gambler in the NFC West just, NFC West. <laughs> just killed me. <laughs> all right, the stage is yours. Okay, all right. Well, I just blew my entire budget for the whole season on that song, so stick with me as I appease our sponsor. Uh, use busr.ag to place all your bets for week one of football. Uh, and now, without any further Mountain Dew, Let's jump into week one, Rams versus Bills. And hold on one second. I forgot. Dean's lock of the week. We do it before Nick's picks. And the theme song, it says it's not a part of the picks, so don't add it to your slate. But Dean always drops a lock. Why don't you go ahead, Dean? Tell us. Tell us. Advise us. My lock is – my actually, my lock of, of all locks is the over in the Rams and Bills game. But mm -hmm. my secondary lock, my backup lock, is Rams money line. Okay. All right. Well, Dean's I'm going to match my, match my BUSR deposit. 
thousand dollars, put it all on the Rams. Dean's lock is literally exactly my first two picks, but let's forget <laughs> about that and let's pretend like we didn't hear it and go back to the intro. Uh, a very special game for a lot of us, Bills at Rams, especially for those of us who are going, aka me and not Dean. Uh, we got the ring ceremony. We got a banner dropping. We got another banner dropping. And we got home dogs. The line is insulting to the Rams. Plus two and a half. When was the last time the Super Bowl winner was this disrespected? I looked. Giants, 2008 season, week one after their magic wild card Super Bowl. They were underdogs at home against the Cowboys. Giants money line, plus 170. Wow. Did they this, win the game? Yeah, they won. And then they went on to lose three. Uh, this season, everyone put their house on the Bills. Everyone has them over 11 wins this year. I have them winning the NFC East, but that shouldn't be too hard. Over 11? I mean, that's just really hard to do in general, no matter what team you are. I'm not sold on them being this darling dynasty. They haven't even cracked an AFC title game. Uh, it's not a must win for either team, but I think this offseason, the Rams got a little disrespected in terms of what they'll bring to this year. The team today should be better than the team that won the Super Bowl on health basis alone. McVay still 5-0 in home openers. Going to go Rams heavy money line at plus 115. And then over 52, grab it before it moves. I think that will be the most popular bet of the night. Um, and I think it will go up. So I would bet that sooner than later. Uh, I also think it's going to be a lot like the Cowboys Bucks opener last year. It was a nail biter all the way through, but the slightly better team was able to eke out that W. Uh, 38 20, or 32 28, the Rams make like Drake and they find a way. They find a way. Boom. <laughs> Drake and Josh reference today. I'm on a roll. Not not the right Drake. That's a different Drake. Yeah, no. I didn't say Drake. Uh, I don't know Drake's last name. Does he have a last name or is he like Cher? Peck. No. Oh, that's Josh. No, oh, I'm Drake. Like, oh, that's that's Toronto. Uh, Toronto. Yeah, Drake Toronto. Um, all right, we're going to keep going. If it hasn't been evident yet, I usually pick with my heart. All throughout Nick's picks, you guys have seen this. It has been pretty magical when things work out, which is why last year if I saw Lions versus Eagles or Packers versus, versus the Vikings, I'd pick the two teams I like more and I'd find a reason in the numbers to go after those teams. But I'm trying to be better this year, Dean. I am. Not just with my guttural instincts and picks and picking the Lions and the Vikings because those are the two teams I like. However, underdogs last year in week one had a remarkable hit rate, and the Vikings split with Green Bay every year. It's a good time that they're catching them, honestly, before Packers get their juju running. Last year, they did not start out hot. Are we doing what I think we're doing? Are we? Are we? Are we Skull Vikes? Are we going a little Skull Vikes? Vikings money line plus 105. Pass heavy offense makes Kirk Cousins look like a better Kirk Cousins. 21 9. Vikings strong start to the year. Wow. You don't even let the Packers score a touchdown? Nope. Tough. No, I know. Actually, I have them scoring a touchdown and then I have them getting a safety. Interesting. It's all right here in the notes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and uh, you know I like, I'm gonna, I like i like the pick i don't know if i like the score but that's fine that's fine that's fine, that's fine. The, the, the score is just for the laws yeah um and my quick pick is lions to cover plus four to the eagles can't go money line because they burdened me so much last year and yet they were so good against the spread all year i think it's going to be a tough out for the eagles you know, my heart's telling me lions, but my gut tells me birds. So let's just go plus four and we'll let, we'll let that sit. So I just did exactly what I said I wouldn't do um, to start that. But oh well. Uh, these are Nick's home dogs. Yeah. We got Rams money line plus 115. Rams bills over 52. Vikings money line plus 105. Lions plus four. And I'm throwing in the last home dog, Dallas over Tampa. Um, Brady retires uh, after week seven due to a broken heart. Dallas money line plus 120. <laughs> and Denver over Seattle. Just the money line. Just take minus 200. Somebody stop me. I'm on a roll. I don't think Even there's any I mean, that's a guaranteed stone cold lock. I mean, yeah, it's like I feel like it should be like minus 400, but whatever. 
Yeah, I think it should honestly be higher than 200. That I think they named Tyler Lockett as one of their captains. I don't even think I'd recognize the names of the other three guys they named captains. This had to have been uh, uh, Geno. I don't think it was. Or wait, is it Geno Smith? Is that their quarterback? Yeah, it's Geno. I don't even care enough to look it up on my phone because it's the Seahawks. Right. But yeah, those are Nick's picks. I feel great about them. Okay, Rams money line, Rams and Bills over. I like, I like. Vikings money line plus 105. Love that. Lions plus four. That game's in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Ford hmm. Field. Hmm. Did you watch all of Hard Knocks? Didn't watch past episode one. I there's it's great. I know. And it's I like great. I I it's probably fantastic. The Eagles are getting so much love as like this darling NFC sneaky team. They've made some good acquisitions in the last couple of weeks. Surely they have, but they have such a question mark at quarterback. And yeah, yeah. Hurts can ball, but just look at what Tampa did to him last year. Yeah, Saints fans and Eagles fans are doing the exact same thing, where all I'm hearing from those camps is our, the rosters. The rosters are great. Our team's going to be great because the rosters are great. Like that's also don't really know how I feel about Nick Sirianni either. I, I right, mean, there's know, a lot of unknowns. Like, I mean, same thing. You know, who knows about Jameis Winston as a full time quarterback in, in see, New now Orleans. that's who's to say he's not. It's funny. I would minutes. so much more buy in Winston stock than I would Sirianni. I mean, Eagles also have like the second easiest schedule. I just not. I guess everyone's saying like if you can get to those playoff games, yeah, you can make a splash. But like, you know. The Rams will have gone up against the AFC West and the NFC West. And if they face the Eagles week one, I don't care who's the wild card. That's an easy game. And In the yeah, NFC, though. They'd save it. I don't care. You know, that's, yeah. that's not good. It's not going to be easy. They're going to have to get birds. through Green Bay, Tampa, the Rams, the Cowboys. And that's kind of it, though. It's not like, like those are the NFC of, teams. I feel like there was one other that I had well, on my I mind. I mean, all of oh, San Francisco. San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Trey Lance, maybe. Oh, I remember okay. I, I, I went on Twitter saying, because I was hearing my little insider insights from a, a camp, and a lot of them were saying Trey Lance is just not that guy. And I was saying stuff like, I, I think it could be his only year in San Francisco this year, like where he starts. And everyone was like, you don't know what you're talking about, Nick. Yeah, this is the same guy who said Goff was better than Stafford, which is not what I said. Um, no, you didn't say that. I never said that, but you know, it happens. People people think of me as this uh, as this egomaniac man, which can be true. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't. I just Trey Lance is just he's he's not that guy. He really he really. I see. Well, I saw him play last year. I saw the opposite. You thought he was that guy. I thought he was going to be that guy. I felt like okay. I saw um, a like a younger. More athletic, but still more raw than Colin Kaepernick. Like I, I, just think, saw, like, uh, I mean, yeah, 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 very yeah. similar. Very, yeah. I'll give him that, but I also don't think that's like a glowing comparison. Um, no, he's but pretty good when he was. What I have good. to say is, imagine if the Niners rolled the dice and put out um, Trey Lance in that NFC Championship game, and he just like you know, a story. Yeah, but Jimmy G hadn't lost to the Rams to that point, so no, I know, but that just like it would have been such a. Uh, like a wild card move. I don't know. I feel like something like that happening where they put Jimmy G in late in the season in a game where they really trust him could happen this year. And oh uh, yeah, the Niners are going to be sneaky. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not touching them week one though. I mean, we that's not worry like, about San Francisco or Seattle quite yet. Yeah. Yeah. We got or some Arizona. So right now it's all 100% the Buffalo bills. And it's I'd all say the Rams week one. Von Miller and Aaron Donald. On opposite sidelines, can't take your eyes off the defensive line. It's going to be a long day for the offensive lines. Yeah. I think it's going to be a long one. But we're ready. We're here. We're seasoned now in season five. And um, we're going to be here with you throughout the entire season. We'll have a recap episode out on Friday. I, Until then, Nick make may sure not guys... be able to make the recap. I have a wedding in San Diego. But don't worry. Uh, we got my dad and maybe some other cool people. And I know some people are even more fans of our dad than they are of us, which is crazy. Uh, I have to I'm wait not, until you're back. I'm not calling anybody out specifically, but, but I, hope <laughs> I have to land. wait. 
right I have now. to wait until you're back in the host seat to do our <laughs> guest episode. Oh, we got a guest coming on? Special guest? Well, we're gonna have multiple guests. We're gonna have callers. Oh. We're gonna have we're gonna have five to seven callers in an episode. And they're do you have that like lined up? Is that like in the books? It's in my mind. <laughs> so no, it. not yet. Not yet. It's all right. Well, I'll just have my buddies it. call us up. It's a no, rolling launch. Yeah, soft launch. Yeah. Soft launch. I'm gonna have people send emails and then they'll be able to join as guests. All right, Dean. Let me just say this one thing before we leave. The California heat is 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 smoldering. So everybody in California, please make sure you guys stay safe. Um, be comfortable. If you're going to the game, drink lots of water. Um, and just, yeah, you know, everybody let's, let's get through this heat wave together. We're almost at the end of it. Horns up. Let's get a Rams W and let's ride into the, uh, into the sunset, run it I'm forward, not, baby. Be I'm, legendary. I'm, yes. I'm not in California with you guys. I wish I was. And I hope you guys are all okay with the heat, but I would recommend two bottles of water before the game and then cheeseburger sub and then more bottles of water and some beer. Yes. Sound good. Yeah, maybe a solo power hour mix in there. Who knows? Do whatever you got to do. It's week one. Heat it up. Cool. Thanks for listening, guys. Love you. Peace. Peace out, Rams house. Go Rams.